Praise the Lord. That's good. Do something better. I said, Praise the Lord. I want you to close your eyes and to pray to the Lord that this night the word of God be real in your life. Tell the Lord tonight that the word of God will bear fruit in your life more than ever before in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. He answers prayer. And if you all pray, God definitely will answer. He has not changed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Pour out your heart before the Lord has promised to fulfill your heart, fulfill your need. It's never failed. It cannot fail. It will not fail.
in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray Heavenly Father we thank you for tonight we bless your name for you to have been already and we thank you because of what you are going to do tonight you will touch every heart tonight in Jesus name I pray that everything shakeable will be shaken out of every life tonight in Jesus' name. I'm asking, Lord, that you grant us the spirit of supplication, the spirit of prayer, and the spirit of intercession. And Lord, we pray anything, everything between us and you, you cancel tonight in Jesus' name. Shower your blessings upon your people. Open the windows of heaven and satisfy every soul tonight in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God shout. We're coming to Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day here was Jacob and this Jacob had a need a peculiar need a perplexing need in his life and there was nobody to help him out but he said, I'm going to trust the word of the Lord concerning me. And because he knew his help will come from heaven, then he was left alone. He separated all that were with him and sent them over the river. And he wrestled there with a man, an invisible man. A man that had not been there in his life before. He came from heaven and he, rest, he, and he wrestled until the breaking of the day. In verse 25, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. It wasn't... Uh, something like 30 minutes like one hour it was until the breaking of the day and he said whatever it will take whatever intercession it will take whatever supplication it will take whatever prayer it will take he was going to pray until the problem was solved that's why we came here that's why you are there. That whatever the challenge in your life and whatever the knot that has not been untied, from this night, you will call upon the name of the Lord by praying, by supplication, by pleading with the Lord and the Lord will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. And he said, this wrestler from heaven. And he said, this one that came to Jacob's life at this time, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except you bless me. He wasn't telling a pastor, he wasn't telling a prophet, he was telling the angel from heaven. He said, I have started and I've laid my hand on this plow and I'm not going to turn back until you bless me I will not let you go and he said unto him what is thy name and he said Jacob and he said thy name shall no more be called Jacob a change came in your, in your life is a change will come in your family a change will come in your Christian life you've been falling and rising falling and rising a change will come and in your courage and commitment and conviction a change will come the things that used to put your back to the wall 
will not affect you anymore and the things that you use to make you feel afraid frightened and timid everything will vanish away in jesus name the things that have made you a coward that made you to be very fearful and frightened before the enemies in the land this night as you pray to the lord as you say lord i'm going to keep on the supplication and the intercession and the prayer until the answer comes courage will come to you conviction will come to you and that power to move on and go on with the lord never compromising taking your stand it is going to happen in jesus name and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God. You have power with God. Relationship with God. Authority even with God. And you'll decree, saying, It shall be established unto you in Jesus' name. You've had power with God and with men. And thou hast power prevailed you will prevail i will prevail over every challenge in your life you will prevail over every temptation you will prevail over every trial you will prevail over the things that conquered you before you're going to prevail in jesus name verse 29 and jacob asked him and said tell me i pray thee thy name and he said wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name and he blessed him there and he blessed him there 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 at that very place he blessed him there here for you here for me he blessed him there is going to bless you here in jesus name the expectation of your life will be fulfilled the desire of your life will be fulfilled the breakthrough you are looking for it is in this place it will be done in jesus name he blessed him there he's going to bless you there i said he's going to bless you there I said it's going to bless you there. We'll bless you with victory. Bless you with triumph. Bless you with power. Bless you with authority. And bless you with the anointing that breaks every yoke. Every yoke in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. And he blessed him there. I look at that i said it's going to bless me here i'm talking about myself and you know there are people that preach and they think the blessing is only for the people who are hearing but as i'm preaching tonight i'm going to receive a miracle i've never received i'm going to see what i've never seen I'm going to touch what I've never touched. I'm going to experience what I've never experienced. He's blessing me here. He will bless you here. I said he will bless you here. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved tonight we're looking at the message tarrying and traveling at peniel tarrying and traveling at peniel that happened in genesis with jacob and now as we come to osea osea the prophet takes that and he applies that and he showed the nation of Israel and he showed them this ought to be our experience he, uh, this is Hosea chapter 12 I read from verse 4 Hosea chapter 12 verse 4 yea he had power over the angel and he prevailed 
he tarried, he waited, he prayed, he made supplication, he asked for his need to be fulfilled. And then Hosea the prophet now say, Yea, he had power over the angel, the power he had not had from the beginning of his life, the power he had not had from the time he had been walking with the Lord. At this time, waiting upon the Lord, tarrying before the Lord, he dug deep until he struck oil. The power you have never experienced, this night is the night for you. The breakthrough you have never got, this night is the night for you. And the victory and the triumph over Esau, over every enemy that you have never experienced, tonight is your night in Jesus' name. In between the verses I'm reading to you, I want you to begin to write down that Jacob concentrated on Esau and he said, tonight, tonight, this Esau must be conquered in my life. Write the name. Any Esau there? Write the name. Any Pharaoh there? Write the name. Any Nebuchadnezzar there? Write the name. Any tyrant there? You say tonight, tonight, my life is going to be free. I am going to be free. I will be free. He had power over the angel and he prevailed. He wept and he made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel and there he speak with us. With his victory, he's speaking to us. With his triumph, he's speaking to us. With the tarrying and travelling, he's speaking unto us. Even the Lord God of hosts. The Lord is his memorial. Therefore, turn thou to thy God. Your problem, that's a crossroad. Your challenges, there's a pressure over your life. There is a sickness attached to your life. And it appears it will not go. This one has prayed. That one has prayed. This other one has prayed. And the thing is still there. You will not give up. Tonight, the problem must be solved. Tonight, that devil must be cast out. Tonight, that impossibility must be possible. Therefore, turn thou to thy God. Keep mercy and judgment and wait. That's another word for tarry. And wait. That's another word. Patiently making supplication before the Lord. You're not in a hurry tonight. You're not saying, you're not looking at time and saying, you must finish at this time, finish at this time. Jacob forgot time. All he said is, I will not let you go. I will not stop the supplication. I will not stop the prayer. I will not stop the intercession except you bless me. All these long-standing problems I've been carrying about. There must be a moment in your life. There must be a time in your life when all those long-standing problems, when they are thrashed, when they are crushed, when they are taken out of your way, you must come out of those predicaments tonight in Jesus' name. However strong the power that bound you, however strong the evil that was in your life, tonight we must break the yoke tonight we must remove everything the devil has put there as if it will continue with you until the end of life we say no satan it will not be in my life it will not be in my family it will not be i will conquer somebody there i will conquer an anointing will come upon your life and the anointing will break every yoke out of your life in jesus name tarrying and traveling at peniel three things i'm looking at number one tracing the tracks 
before Peniel, tracing the tracks before Peniel. What had happened before Peniel? What had he gone through before Peniel? What was his case history before Peniel? Before he said, enough is enough. I must set you this thing tonight. Let's see what actually was the genesis of the problem. The origin of the problem. The commencement of the problem. Genesis chapter 25. I'm reading to you from verse 29. Genesis chapter 25. And I'm reading here from verse 29. Here was the genesis of the problem. The origin of the problem. The generator. What generated the problem. We're looking at Genesis chapter 25. And I'm reading from verse 29. And Jacob sought pottage. And he saw came from the field. And he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. It was a transaction that started it. Jacob wanted the birthright and Esau wanted a spotage and therefore there was a bargain, a transaction give me what you have and I'll surrender what I have Esau was not thinking of the final result of that kind of transaction maybe there are th things in your life you made an agreement with somebody give me this I'll give you myself. Give me this, and I'll give you money for it. Give me this, and I will, maybe it's even marriage, I will marry you. And since that transaction, and since that covenant, there has been a challenge. But well, thank God you are here tonight. If you have never seen breakthrough in your life tonight, you will see miracle and breakthrough. If you have never seen deliverance, you have never seen dominion tonight, dominion has come. Deliverance has come. Once you make up your mind, I will tarry, I will travel, I will pray, I will prevail. You will prevail in Jesus' name. But start it to you. And you saw said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. Maybe the genesis of your problem is that swearing. You swore to that person. Maybe you even marked your body and blood came out. And he marked the body and she marked her body and blood came out. And you put the two together. And then you did something with the solution with water, with that blood. Coming from both of you. Because you were desperate. I must have this. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. That's where the problem started. Wherever your problem started tonight, we'll root it out. It must go tonight. It must be destroyed tonight. Then Jacob gave his some bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat. And he drink. And he rose up. And went his way. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. Now, what followed? Chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 1. 27 verse 1 and it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see he called his son his elder, his elder son 
and said unto him my son and he said unto him behold here i am and he said behold now i am old and i know not the day of my death now therefore take i pray thee thy weapons thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and take me some venison and make me savory meat such as i love and bring it to me that i may eat look at this that my soul may bless thee before i die he wanted to transfer the blessing of the birthright unto him and he said your time has come but he has sold himself away your time has come he had sold his opportunity away your time has come but he has sold his privilege away and he wasn't a man of prayer he wasn't a man of supplication he wasn't a man of convicting courage he wasn't a man for repentance he didn't know that anything had happened because of that transaction that he made and so he went to the field and he wanted to make savory meat like the father loved so that the birthright will be effected in his life but now look at verse 17 jacob i've been waiting for something like this and the mother was supporting him verse 17 and she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son jacob and he came each unto the father and said my father and he said here am i who art thou my son and jacob said unto his father i am tell me he saw thy firstborn i have done according as thou bidest me arise i pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me and i seek said unto his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son and he said because the lord thy god brought he to me yes we know he was telling lies but follow the story and isaac said unto jacob come near i pray thee that i may feel thee my son whether thou be my very son esau or not and jacob went near unto isaac his father and he felt him and said the voice is jacob's voice but the hands are the hands of esau and he discerned him not he recognized him not he said there's something fishy here there's something i don't understand here there's something i can't decipher here there's something i can't discern here the voice is the voice of jacob you couldn't change that but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were airy as his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. So he blessed him. He stole the blessing from Esau. That's what Esau thought. Because now, and he said, art thou my very son Esau and he said I am and eventually Esau came look at verse 34 when Esau came and he said my father I'm here now bring the blessing shower the blessing on me give me that breakthrough give me the breakthrough for the firstborn he said who are you he said i'm esau your firstborn what happened somebody came here 
and he has got the blessing he cried because he realized that was the evidence of the transaction that had been made in the past he regretted it and now it says and when he saw heard the words of his father he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father bless me even me also O my father and he said thy brother came with deception with lie with pretense with subtlety with bad cleverness and has taken away thy blessing and then he cried again and he said bless me is the only one blessing in your mouth and eventually look at verse 41 and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him and Esau said in his heart the days of mourning for my father at hand then tell me I will slay my brother Jacob and that's the genesis of the problem and as you look at what happened unto Jacob he carried that fear in his life he knew the shadow of Esau was following after him he knew any time he met Esau if this situation is not resolved it will mean death he will not be able to enjoy the blessing that he got from the father eventually he had to go out of town chapter 28 verse 5 and I seek saint away Jacob and he went to Padan Aram unto Laban the son of Bethuel the Syrian the brother of Rebekah Jacob's and Esau's mother he ran away although he ran away he still had to come back and as he was coming back I want you to look at chapter 31 Genesis chapter 31 I'm reading from verse 4 Genesis chapter 31 verse 4 and Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock and said unto them I see your father's countenance Laban that it is not toward me as before he said I ran away from hatred I meet another one here I ran away from challenge I've met another one here I've run away I've run away from restlessness and I meet another stage another stage of restlessness here he says I see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before but the God of my father has been with me and you know that with all my power with all my skill with all my strength with all my commitment I have served your father and your father has deceived me he kept on reaping the, what he sowed he sowed deception and in his life deception deception all through his life he wanted to marry Rachel and then Laban gave him Leah how did you do this to me Jacob that's what you sowed deception and deception followed after him he didn't think it was time to pray because things were piling up the problems were piling up then he, he said your father has deceived me and changed my wages how many times ten times but God suffered him not to hurt me and I he told them he was leaving he was not going back home look at verse 14 in verse 14 and Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house are not we counted of him strangers 
For he has sold us, is giving us away at a great price, and has quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God has taken from our Father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon the camels. And he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten. And the cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Padan Aram. For to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. Is this coming back that Esau heard? And Esau said, Come back. I've been waiting for you. The hatred of the birthright you took from me is still there at its very height. Come back and I'm going to deal with you. It was that that made him to now make supplication and to make prayer before the Lord. Actually, his prayer had started from chapter 32, verse 1. Look at this. Genesis chapter 32, verse 1. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my Lord Esau. He's calling him Lord because of fear, not because really, you know, uh, believe that in his heart. My Lord, tell Esau, I call him my Lord. Tell Esau, I call him my master. I'm not just calling him my twin brother. He is Lord and his servant and thy servant Jacob. He said, I will serve you. Don't worry about the birthright. I'm going to be your servant. And whatever you want me to do, I will obey you like a slave. Thy servant Jacob says thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have said to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. He was trying to appease him, but his thing will not work. And the messengers returned in verse 6 to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau. And also he come to meet thee. Tell me, tell me. Tell me out aloud. Four hundred men with him. He had gathered some valiant soldiers, four hundred. And he said, I don't know the number is coming away, but I will finish him. Maybe somebody is saying he will finish you. But tonight will make it turning around in your life in Jesus name Amen. nobody will finish you Amen. did you hear that I said nobody will finish you Amen. nobody will finish your family Amen. nobody will finish your children Amen. as you come to the Lord and you say Lord tonight whatever it takes Whatever time it will take, tonight I'm going to hold on to the horns of the altar. And I'm going to seek your face. And I know that tonight my situation is going to turn around. It will turn around in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people that was with him 
and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands. And he said, If Esau come to walk to the one company and smite it, he was uh, playing game with Esau. He said, All right, I know what to do. I'll divide my possession, my property into two. And if he comes and he meets the first one and destroy them, then the other company which is led shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father, Abraham, that's prayer. He was praying. You know the kinds of prayer we pray. And since you came to this retreat, you have been praying. Just like Jacob prayed. But the prayer tonight is going to be the one that will break the camel's back. He was praying and said, oh, Jacob said, O oh God of my father, Abraham, God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return thou unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy, he was praying, of the least of all, the, all thy mercies, and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff, I passed over this Jordan, and now I become two birds. Deliver me, I pray. He was praying, but that prayer was superficial. That prayer had a lot of human strategy, a lot of maneuvering, a lot of uh, calculation. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother Esau. From the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and smite me, the mother, with the children. That was his prayer. He was looking up to the Lord, and he said, Lord, do this. But it appears he knew there wasn't any breakthrough yet. You know, there are kinds of prayer we pray. The prayer that fulfills the time the prayer that we manage to pray so that we will not say we didn't pray and that prayer has not worked and that prayer has not met the condition that god has given that prayer has not brought the breakthrough that's why tonight there'll be prayer who will do the praying you and I will do the praying. And tonight, praise the Lord, I see your miracle coming on the way. I see the power of God coming on the way for you in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Tarina and traveling for power. Tarina and traveling for power. Look at Jacob. Jacob knew when he's alone by himself how to strategize, how to arrange, how to put things in order. He knew how to make plans with Laban. He did a lot of that. And now that he's coming back, he's doing a lot of that. He divided the people into two. If Esau gets this, this one will escape. Strategy, human strategy. And the thing did not work. But now, this one will work. I said, this one will work. In your life, maybe you know how to strategize. How to run from this corner to that corner. And you know how to in a way superficially silence your enemy but they are silence they're still coming up they go through that way and they appear through this way and they appear every time and you say what am i going to do that's what we are saying tonight what are you going to do that this is all you have been strategizing and planning and yet the strategy will not work 
you will tarry, you will travail. I said you will tarry and you will travail. I remember those good old days. We'll finish our camp like this. And then after people have gone back, they have gone to the hostels to sleep. If you, ha, if you discover the retreat program of Deep Alive, Deep Christian Life Ministry, we had the first one, 1975. And you, if you take hold of that program, we'll finish at 9, 9 Sachi. Then we we'll take our meal, and then I invite them back for digging deep. And the people will come, those who have problems that they've never been able to solve. And we get into digging deep, and all those problems, they were solved. Tonight, your problems are solved. The mountain is gone tonight, in Jesus' name. As you tarry in the presence of the Lord, and you travel with power, power from an high, you will conquer Esau. I said you will conquer Esau. You might have to spend some extra time. You might have to wait upon the Lord. You might have to pray like you never prayed before. It is not just to have retreat. It is not just to go through the messages of the program. It is to solve problem. Your problems are solved in this retreat in Jesus' name. Tarrying and traveling. I'm coming to chapter 32 of Genesis. And I'm reading from verse reading from verse 12 Genesis chapter 32 verse 12 thou hast said I will surely do thee good I was coaching the promises of God and make thy seed as I send up the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude and he lodged there that same night and he took of that which came to his hand, a present for Esau, his brother. That was restitution. Was trying to make restitution. Esau, you know what? The birthright I got from you, this is what it has provided. And even though the birthright has been sold to me, the fruit of that birthright, the outcome of that birthright, the material things of God from that birthright have your share. And so he sent a present unto him, 200 she goats and 20 he goats and 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milch camels with their coats, 40 kine and the ten bulls, twenty she has is, and ten foals, and he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove, and he commanded the foremost saying when ye saw my brother meetest thee and askest thee saying who's art thou and whither goest thou and whose are these before thee thou shalt say they be thy servant Jacob's it is a present saint to my Lord Esau and behold he is behind us and so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the droves saying on this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him and say ye moreover behold thy servant Jacob is not your Lord he doesn't want to rule over you. He wants to take a back seat. It's your servant Jacob and is behind us. For he said, I will appease him 
with the presence that goes before me and I'm to watch I will see his face but adventure he will accept of me so the presence so went the presence over before him and himself lodged that night in the company look at verse 22 and he rose up that night and he took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the forge Jab Jabbok and he took them and he sent them over the brook and sent over that he had he said all these stage managing things will not work he saw it's more difficult than this he said now nobody can pray this kind of prayer with me they don't know how to pray this kind of prayer and so he sent them ahead because now he was ready ready to tarry tonight you are ready say i am ready ready to travel tonight you are ready to travel in jesus name and jacob verse 24 was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day they were wrestling they were wrestling it was spiritual his heart was broken his life was shattered he looked at everything is god he was wrestling to retain everything that he got he was wrestling to retain the birthright that actually mommy told me that when she was pregnant there was trouble and she went to god and god said the younger will rule over the elder and that jacob will be the one that will have the birthright i didn't have to go and tell a lie i didn't have to deceive i didn't have to do anything if i waited for god god would have done it it was wrestling with that idea it was wrestling with everything he had done and he said i went wrong in that way i wrestled with that i went wrong in that way i wrestled with that as he wrestled with everything that he had done in the past now it says and when he saw when the angel saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his tie and the hollow of jacob's tie went out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaketh let me go let's finish this wrestling i need to return i don't want the light of day to see me as a visitor from heaven i want to go and jacob said we'll be wrestling all night and what we're wrestling about has not been resolved i don't have the clarity in my heart i don't have the witness in my soul that the problem has been solved this problem must be solved tonight i said this problem must be solved tonight and he said i will not let you go except thou bless me and he said unto him what's thy name what's thy name why was the angel asking him of his name he wanted to verify we'll be wrestling any change any transformation any conversion are you going to tell the same old lie you told i seek your father i am esau your firstborn the question is coming back to you again you know if you're living your life lying and lying and lying before the blessing of crossing over onto the other side of Jordan before the blessing of crossing over on the other side of Peniel before the blessing of crossing over onto heaven those lies will come back again what's your name 
What did you say before? Where do you stand? What is the evidence of your conversion? Where is the evidence of your salvation? What is thy name? And he said, Jacob, that Tresleena had done something. That lie is out. That deception is out. That hypocrisy is out. You'll be a new man from tonight. A new woman from tonight. Why did he tell the lie? Because he thought, I must say I'm Esau. If I'm going to have the blessing. Now he realized. It, I don't need to tell a lie. The prophecy will confirm the blessing upon me. I'm Jacob. The promise of God will confirm the blessing upon my life. I am Jacob. And the visitor from heaven wrestling together with me. Who is going to drop a blessing before he goes? He will confirm the blessing upon my life. I don't have to tell a lie anymore. My name is Jacob. You become greater than Jacob. Higher than Jacob. I can't, I can't hear the amen I was waiting for. Verse 28, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob, shall no more be called deceiver, shall no more be called liar, shall no more be called a carnal strategist. But Israel, for as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed. Tonight you will prevail. Tonight you will prevail. Isaiah chapter 40. Travelling. Tarry. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading here from verse 28. Isaiah 40. Verse 28. In verse 28, it says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power. Jacob had power, and that power transformed his life even change his name tonight power will come from on high power of sonship will come from on high the power of sanctification will come from on high the power of spirit baptism will come from on high and the power of supremacy over your enemy will come from on high in jesus name your victory has come. The power has come. The traveling will usher you into triumph in Jesus' name. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint. And be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that tarry. The word wait means to tarry. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's what Jacob did. He knew all this strategizing, all this game playing, all these, you know, trying to do it by my own effort. It has not worked. It doesn't bring the victory. It doesn't bring the expectation of the one of the sea you are hoping for. But as you leave all those kind of strategies and you leave all those maneuvering situations and you wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run they shall not be weary they shall walk and they shall not faint. are you there i said are you there I'm going to make it personal now. 
he that waits upon the Lord shall renew his strength. She that waits upon the Lord shall renew her strength. He shall mount up with wings as eagles. She shall mount up with wings as eagles. He shall run and shall not be weary. She shall run and shall not be weary. He shall walk and shall not faint. She shall walk and shall not faint. Now, instead of thee, instead of him, instead of he, instead of she, instead of her. Who is that? But I was your name that wait upon the Lord shall renew my strength shall renew my strength I will mount up with wings as eagles I will run I will run and I will not be weary I will walk and I will not faint the power of God will come upon your life. You need to tarry. You need to tarry. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading here from verse 49. It says in verse 49, And behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye, tarry ye, you have to wait, you have to call upon the Lord, you have to say, Lord, I know the promise, I know the prophecy. All the human strategies, carnal strategies, all the games I was playing, the game has not resulted in the breakthrough that I want. I've been to retreats. I've been to all the meetings and all the time I'll say this is my expectation this is my expectation and then I stand up and pray for five minutes and then I say I'm having the breakthrough all through that time the power of sonship is like dwindling and the power of sanctification is like unstable the power of the spirit is like it's not really there in his fullness but now tonight somebody say now tonight I will tarry I will travail power will come in Jesus name and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high until 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 ye be endued with power from on high it will happen Isaiah chapter 66 Isaiah chapter 66 I'm reading from verse 8 Verse 8, who has heard such a thing, who has seen such things, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. The barren will have miracle children. The poor will have jobs. Will have progress. Will have prosperity. And every lack in your life, the Lord will supply in Jesus' name. Point number three, the triumph of transformation at Pentecost. The triumph of transformation at Pentecost we're coming from Peniel and we came through the place of power 
and now we're coming to Pentecost because Pentecost is higher than Peniel and whatever Jacob got over there at Peniel you are going to have more at Pentecost we're coming back to Genesis chapter 33 Genesis chapter 33 I'm reading from verse 1 Genesis chapter 33 and we're reading from verse 1 and Jacob lifted up his eyes remember he tarried remember he travailed now he's going to have the triumph of transformation Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked and behold Esau came and with him 400 men they were still there their arms were in their hand their desire focus plan was in their mind they, are, they were going to finish the man but now something has changed are you there I wish I could come to you right there where you are and tell you in particular your travail, your tarrying has brought triumph into your life. Yeah. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost and Leah and her children after and Rachel and Joseph in the most and he passed over before them when he was uh, still planning and doing a gameplay he said let them go ahead if this one dies at least I'll still be alive and then let the other company go ahead if that one dies this one will escape but now he went in front of them conviction has come courage has come power has come assurance has come transformation has come anybody there tonight i said anybody there tonight transformation coming your way in jesus name everything in the past that puts your back to the wall you conquer tonight in jesus name anything that brought tears in your eyes before crying for the devil crying for the enemy all those tears are wiped away tonight in jesus name anything that made you to slow down and to drag back anything that made you to be afraid they're coming for me they're going to get me all that fear tonight is cancelled in jesus name anything that made you a slave a slave to esau a slave to your enemies a slave to men and women in society all the slavery there is abolition of slavery tonight in jesus name you will not be a slave you will be a master you will not be a tail you will be the head you will not be the last you will be in front verse 3 verse 3 and he passed over before them and he bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother and he saw ran and he saw ran and he saw ran and he saw ran to meet him and he embraced him and he fell on his neck and he kissed him and they wept the first time after that incident when Esau saw that he wept and he couldn't get the blessing he wept it was a tear of hatred and the tear of an enemy and the tear I will finish him he will not enjoy that blessing but now his heart has been softened the heart of your enemy tonight is softened in Jesus name and he lifted up his eyes and he saw the women and he saw the children and said who are these with thee and he said 
the children which God has graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaids came at near they and their children and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her, her children came near and bowed themselves. And after the after that came Joseph near and Rachel and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou? By all this drove which I made. And he said, They are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, Esau said, I have enough, my brother. I have enough, my brother. You are my brother. Keep what you have. Keep that that thou hast unto thyself. The victory has been won. I said the victory has been won. You have the victory tonight. I said you have the victory tonight. All your fears are gone. All your enemies are conquered. Victory. Somebody shout victory. Proverbs chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 7. Proverbs chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. At peace with him. I didn't hear the amen. You know, as you say that amen, the prophecy will be confirmed in your life. The promise will be confirmed in your life. Latter will come. Weeping will come to an end. I'm looking at Psalm 18. Psalm 18. I'm reading from verse 29. Psalm 18. I'm reading from verse 29. By thee have I run through it through. By my God have I lived to by a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord try is tried. He's a buckler to all those that trust in him for who is god except the lord save the lord and who is a rock save our god it is god that guardeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect it is god that guardeth you with strength and maketh your way perfect your way perfect your family perfect your business perfect and all the confusion and all the things you are thinking about how will this be done how will this come through you have come through tonight second second corinthians chapter 2 second corinthians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 and thanks be unto god which always causes us to triumph in christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Now, Jacob had the victory. And now, it's your turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's your turn in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. First John chapter 4, reading from verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Give me another amen there. Chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, 
but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not that wicked one touches you not that Esau will not touch you again Pharaoh will not touch you again and Shinakarib will not touch you again Nebuchadnezzar will not touch you again you're more than a conqueror you're more than a conqueror you will triumph you will travel and as you travel you're going to triumph in Jesus name now your time has come my time has come my time has come breakthrough tonight breakthrough tonight victory tonight conquering tonight power tonight you're going to overcome in jesus name he give it part to the faint and to them that have no might increase strength because they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles nothing will stop your progress and your promotion and your victory from tonight in jesus name they shall run they shall not be weary you'll not be tired again i said you'll not be tired again they shall walk and it shall not fade now my time has come i said now my time has come every high scene against your life they are brought down tonight in jesus name stand up and make it happen stand up and make it happen stand up and make it happen tarry 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 in the presence of the lord until you travel tarry what is that esau that esau will be conquered what is that enemy that enemy will be conquered what is that mountain that mountain will move away tell the lord tell the lord it's time for you to tarry like jacob it's time for you to speak speak your mind before the lord what's a challenge what's the difficulty Was a high mountain before you? Was the impossible situation before you? Tonight is the night of tarry. You tarry until the power from on high will come upon your life. Enough is enough. Enough for being defeated enough of running away from Esau enough for being a coward enough for being conquered enough for failing enough of living like an ordinary person when the power from Calvary is there to break every yoke and to destroy every work of the devil enough of carrying egyptian sickness enough of living from hand to mouth enough tarry before the lord he tarried he travailed He triumphed. Satan will not overcome you. Evil spirits will not overcome you evil power will not overcome you all the challenges of the past will not overcome you tarry in the sight of the lord until you travel
they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Renew your strength tonight. Renew your courage tonight. Renew your mind tonight. Renew the situation of your life tonight. Become a different man, a different woman. Tarry, travail until you triumph. You cannot be defeated. You will not accept defeat. If you say, Tonight, I'm through. I am through. I'm through with all the panicking. I'm through with all the doubts. I'm through with submitting my life under a human controller. I am through. I'm through with being a slave. A slave to Satan. A slave to society. I'm through. I'm through with vacillating. Sometimes on the mountain, sometimes in the valley. I'm through. I'm through with human weakness. Weakness of character. Weakness of disposition. Weakness in my courage. Weakness in my appearance. I am through. Enough is enough. Tarry. Travail. Until you triumph. Esau must be melted down. Every enemy must be melted down. All the 400 men coming with Esau to wage war against your life must be melted down. Tarry. Travail. Triumph. That miracle must come. That transformation must come. That power must be experienced. Tarry before the Lord. This mountain must be removed. And those Egyptians who have seen until tonight must be driven away from your life and then you begin to live a life of conviction a life of accomplishment a life of progress a life of courage a life of fearlessness a life that you live according to your conviction and you're not going to think what will this man do what will that woman do take your life out of their hands don't put your life in the end of Esau don't put your life in the hands of the 400 men rise up and leave Let the power come. Let the anointing come. Let the authority come. 
let it move you from the inner man and become a different man a different woman from tonight the things you used to fear you fear them no more the people you used to run away from you run away no more the Goliath that used to be a towering overwhelming figure has become a dwarf a pygmy before you tonight Esau is conquered Pharaoh is conquered Nebuchadnezzar is conquered Dig deep until you strike oil. Dig deep until you reach the oil level. Things are different now. Things are different now. Something happened to me. Something happened to you. The miracle is done. The oil of anointing that breaks every yoke is now upon you. The power that overcomes that power is upon your life right now. Make the rest of the time you spend here at the retreat. Make it tarrying time. Traveling time. Triumphing time. In Jesus' name we pray. Let those who are transformed from being Jacob to Israel, let them say Amen. Your tarrying, your travailing has resulted in triumphing. I have overcome. I have overcome. Now I have the power. Now I have the victory. Now I have the assurance. I am more than a conqueror. Raise up those signs. Your miracle has come. Your breakthrough has come. Your expectation is fulfilled. Esau now has been conquered. And every power that went against your life before, they are under your feet now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. A night of tarry. A night of traveling. A night of triumphing. For every child of God, boy girl use adult lord i pray power to come upon every life in jesus name lord i pray every one of your children will triumph will overcome 
and you grant everyone the breakthrough in Jesus name any sickness of the Egyptians on the body of anyone there I command you come out in Jesus name barrenness you are cancelled from every life brother sister receive your miracle children in jesus name those who are jobless receive the miracle job those who are at a crossroad wondering where do i go what do i do receive the vision and revelation of progress in your life in jesus name old enough to marry but you've been thinking you've been praying who is it now you go this way they shut the door you go that way they block the way all closed doors before you be opened in jesus name bone of your bone flesh of your flesh receive it now in jesus name that person that swore and said as long as she is alive as long as he is alive that you will not make it i cancel that language of esau in jesus name open door before you open gates before you success in your life victory in your life triumph in your life and as you go from this place and you meet the old old esau esau will be melted down esau will cry esau will weep and all the blessings you have got esau or any relative of esau will not be able to touch it in jesus name you are more than a victor more than a conqueror more than an overcomer lord confirm it in every life thank you lord because i know it is done brother for your life it is done sister in your life it is done my son my daughter there in your life it is done the road is clear for you now go and triumph in every area of your life in jesus name i pray